Okay, this uh, video is to support your uh, multiple choice uh, series of uh, questions which are going to come up in the, um, you're likely to see in the multi choice part of the uh, exam. So we're just going to go through a few things you need to make a note of. Um, if we just look at our basic circuit then, which we are familiar with, a circuit consists of a supply and it consists of a load. We have current I flowing through there, the supply voltage V and the resistance is the load. And we know that it is electrons flowing around our circuit to produce that current. The effect of the current is twofold. It produces a magnetic field in a clockwise direction if it's flowing from positive to negative. So in the conductor it produces a magnetic field in a clockwise direction. It also produces heat in the resistance path of the current. So in reality then We know that cable consists of hundreds of resistors in series, thousands if not millions of resistances in series, and that produces what we call a volt drop. We get a volt drop across each section of the cable from A to B. So volt drop is caused by two things. The resistance of the cable, or the resistivity of the cable, rho, and also its length, and also its cross-sectional area. But it's mainly the resistance of the cable and its cross-sectional area and its length that causes the volt drop. So the longer the cable, the greater the volt drop. The higher the current, the greater the volt drop. The higher the resistance, the greater the volt drop. Okay. We know that resistance <coughs> is the ratio of voltage and current. So that's what we can say. Resistance is the ratio of these two things. We also showed that resistance tends to go up with temperature. And that's known as a, a positive temperature coefficient. There are a couple of materials, particularly carbon, which exhibit a negative temperature coefficient. One of them being carbon. When too much current goes through a cable, like this, too much current goes through that cable, it produces a lot of heat, as we showed before, it produces heat, and this heat will set fire to the insulation and turn it into carbon. So it no longer becomes a very good insulator, it actually starts to conduct. We don't want that. No. What you need to remember is this is a negative temperature coefficient. If we have a circuit like this with two resistors in series, a supply and a switch 
when that switch is left open, we can actually measure the voltage across that switch and it will be the same voltage as VS. And I can prove that by showing you this little circuit. This. Here's VS supply going through the switch here, coming out of the switch to the bulb, through the bulb and back to the supply again. If I measure the voltage across that switch now with the bulb switched on, hopefully you can see the bulb is lit. You can see that on the video. Off on, off on. If I measure the voltage across that switch with the bulb on, the voltage across the switch is zero. Zero on the meter. No voltage across the switch. You switch it off, measure the voltage. I get the supply voltage. If I get it the right way around, positive negative. Same thing. Supply voltage. Which proves that in your game, particularly at high voltage, if a switch is off and the thing, the supply is off, if you went to work on that switch, it doesn't mean it's safe. It's not isolated because there's still a voltage across the switch. So in this situation, here, where we have a circuit like that, the switch is open, the potential difference, or the voltage, will still be across that switch. So it doesn't matter what this voltage is, it doesn't matter whether it's 1 volt, 2 volts, or a million volts you'll still get the voltage across this switch when the switch is open. Okay. I'll probably have to do two clips because I'm running out of time now. I've only got a couple of minutes left on this clip. And as we said before, volt drop of a cable depends on its resistivity and its length. They're the two main factors that will affect the volt drop of a particular cable. You should have watched the uh, capacitors video and this is the capacitor video. There's a capacitor here, which can be charged up. If I charge that up, I charge that up. Let's join in, herding the fish to the surface, where the sardines have nowhere to go and they're attacked from every angle. Just turn the telly off, which is just come on, turn that off. And on the second video, I'll just demonstrate why we need discharge resistors across capacitors to make them safe. So if you watch the second video, we'll take it from there. Thanks.